Next on Startup, we head over to Nashville, Tennessee to talk to Chip, a musician turned roadie who created Celebrity Bus Drivers Academy, a one of a kind school that teaches people how to drive a bus for celebrities. Then we head over to St. Louis to talk to Dawn, a true humanitarian who created Made for Freedom, a clothing company that employs the former victims of human trafficking. All of this and more is next on Startup. It all starts with an idea, and everyone has them. In the world of business, where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support Startup and those who dare to share their ideas with the world. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Chevrolet, find new roads. American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. My name is Gary Bredo, and I'm a documentary filmmaker and an entrepreneur. The economy is in less than perfect shape, and when the jobs go away, there's nothing left to do but get up and get creative. And there are people all over America doing just that. It's estimated that up to 85% of new businesses fail. So I'm going coast to coast to hear the personal stories of the people who beat the odds and started a successful business from the ground up. This is Startup. I'm on Nashville Pike in Gallatin, Tennessee. And we're gonna go talk to Chip who created the Celebrity Bus Drivers Academy. Although Chip already had a successful career in the tour bus industry, he never believed in retirement. So he took his years of knowledge and he started this unique training program. Let's go hear his story. Across the United States, the bus industry is made up of around 3,000 local and regional bus companies. To become a driver for a charter bus, you have to start with about one to three months of training and obtain a commercial driver's license. Chip loved everything about the music industry, but after giving it his best shot in Nashville, he decided that if you can't beat them, join them. As their bus driver, that is. All right, Chip, let's start at the beginning. Okay. I want to know who you are as a person. <laughs> Give me a little bit about your background and your history. Okay. Uh, number one, I've never had a real job in my life. I've been in the music business since I was 16 years old. Congrats. Yes, there you go. I moved to Nashville in 1980 to sing backup for Donna Fargo ended up eventually driving her bus because I knew how to drive a bus. Went from that into tour managing, drove a bus, was a booking agent for a while, drove a bus, uh, tried to be a singer again for a while, drove a bus. You've heard of has-beens? Yes. I'm a never was. Okay, God. I'm starting to see a pattern here with yeah. the driving the bus thing, yeah. okay? Absolutely. Uh, in the late 80s, another fellow and I who were driving buses for a guy who owned about four buses. And one day he said to us, I want out of this business. If you guys will take these two buses, I'll own or finance them for you. So all of a sudden I was Great. a bus company owner. From that, uh, I eventually bought the partner out, uh, ended up building it into arguably one of the three biggest and best bus leasing companies in the United States of America. All the time I owned that coach company, I got approximately 20 calls a month from Greyhound drivers, seated bus drivers, truck drivers, saying, how do I get into driving for the stars? Right. So once I, I retired, sold the company, I'm looking around for something to keep myself going, to stay in, in, in the edge of the business, and I thought, I want to start a school and teach these guys. And because I was in the business so long, I know all the owners across America, they know if I send the guy to them, he knows what he's doing and that I'm gonna be there mentoring the guy. Part of my service is to mentor these guys after I get them a job. Let's talk about uh, the sale of your company. Was it a large sale? The company owned 50 of these buses at the time, so yes, it was, it was a rather large sale. What do they go for? 
a million dollars, give or take a little bit. Okay, I can do, I can do the math, <laughs> yeah. carry the one. Yeah, you, exactly. you made all right. <laughs> that is a, a huge number. Absolutely, it is. What, why, why does it cost a million bucks for a bus like this? Just out of curiosity. The, the bus itself is half a million dollars. The interior work is all custom, and you pay for custom work. So there is an industry standard on the way these things are set up. For the most part, yes, but like I say, that we can do anything as far as customization inside a bus that you want. What's the craziest stuff you've ever seen inside a bus? Uh, revolving shoe racks, um, uh, recording studios. Oh, I can imagine that'd be useful on the road, though. J just pretty much anything that you can fit in this space, yeah. they'll put in here for you. Hot tubs, you name it, they'll put them in here. A lot of demands, a lot of stress. A lot of demands. The people you're dealing with expect the best and they expect everything to be perfect and face it, life is not perfect. Uh, the, the, the buses generally roll after show at night when the band tears down, loads up their trucks, their buses, they head off overnight to the next city. So if there's going to be a problem, it's usually at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And I never once had a tour manager call me at 2 or 3 in the morning to tell me what a great job I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> tour bus drivers and you have all the cliches. Uh, you know, you, the groupies want to get on the bus, down to you're hanging out partying with the, with the musicians and artists. What's, what's the truth? The, the truth is that it's a fun job to work in, but it is a job. The band does not like to look across the stage and see their driver over there watching the show when they know they've got a 10 hour drive that night. They want to go to sleep and know their driver's staying awake. They want him back in the hotel sleeping. If you're thinking of becoming a charter bus driver, you must maintain a driving record free of any major traffic citations, or your chances of scoring a good gig are pretty slim. How did you go about the school? Did you need accreditation? Uh, where did you find the space? Where did you get the students? Tell me the whole process. Very good. There was no accreditation. This has never, ever before been done on a legitimate basis, teaching entertainer drivers to drive. It's niche. To my knowledge. It's a niche business, it for sure is. Uh, in the very beginning, I partnered up with another fellow by the name of Tandy Rice and uh, had, had a, done a similar school to this for musicians. So with my experience with the buses and my knowledge of buses and drivers and his experience of how to put it together, we hired a publicity company. We put some publicity out there. I uh, got a lot of interest in the beginning from, from the media, uh, which turned into quite a, quite a few students. We had 13 students came to that first class. Truck drivers, a lot of them have a hard time understanding and getting into this because they're not used to their their load, as you would say, talking back to them or being part of it. And Strawberries don't talk maybe back a, to you. A little bit more introverted type of person. Yes, yes. And I'm not saying I'm not saying truck drivers are bad. I'm just saying it's a little more of a learning curve for them. It's a little more something for them to get used to. And you've got an artist in the back that that says, "I want to stop here. I want to go there. I want to do this." And a lot of them are just not used to it. So is that a lot of the? Uh kind of the learning curve is personality or psychological sort of training? Absolutely, it really is. And, and, and there's an awful lot of training in driving smooth, easy and no sharp turns and no hard braking and no hard accelerating. You know, most of the time when you're driving at night, people are asleep and what you're trying to do is let them sleep because you know they've got to get up. These crew guys call a lot of times for setup is 8 a.m. and these guys work straight through the day till the loadout's done at 2 and they've got a few hours of sleep on the bus and that's your job is to let them sleep. We expect them to come to the table with at least three years of commercial driver license experience. Yeah, you're not a truck driving school. What exactly. you're teaching is the finesse of dealing with celebrities and, and uh, a tour. Yeah, you figure that out quite well. <laughs> <laughs> what does it cost to go to uh, take a class? The uh, tuition for the class is $1,000. It's a four-day class. Mm -hmm. um, I've had a lot of people say to me, how can you teach a guy to do this in four days? You can't. But in four days of really intense training, I dare anybody to come up with more than we give them. Are there any other, you know, celebrity bus driving schools now? There still are, are none to my knowledge, zero. You have the market corner. <laughs> oh, I do, <laughs> I do. Only six states currently require seatbelts on buses. 
Even with this statistic, up to 80% of new coaches have seatbelts installed. How valuable is, uh, is Chip's business to, to you here? I mean, you have 47 buses, they need drivers. Uh, was there a need for what Chip does? Oh, the, absolutely. Uh, you know, our, our industry is a little bit different than, than a seated bus or a truck driver, and, and it's, a, it's almost like an elite club, and you, and you need to know the ins and outs of how it works. And guys coming in fresh, they don't know how the, the business operates and know what to do. I love my job. I love my job more because it was such a feat for me to get into this industry. Um, so anything that I can do for Chip whenever he calls, um, you know, they ask me to come and speak at the school uh, on different occasions. Uh, you know, I'm, if I'm home, I'm more than happy to go. Give him some real world experience. Give him some real space. world experience for sure. And it's, it, like I said, it's not all glamorous. I mean, there's going to be some, there's going to be some tours that aren't going to be so good. There's going to be some people that, you know, you don't quite click with. The more you can learn to adapt your personality to fit every genre of music and entertainment, the better it's going to be for you in the long run. Well, thank you so much, man. Thank you for coming to Nashville and talking to the Celebrity Bus Drivers Academy. Absolutely. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Chip do it? Let's find out. He started with $10,000 in the bank and a credit score of 687. His first year sales were around 50,000, which was a break even. He spent only $4,000 to start his business, which he used out of his savings. And the one word that Chip uses to describe what it really takes to make it in business is grit. Chip definitely had the drive to put this business on the road to success. You can't just sit in one place spinning your wheels. You gotta put your dreams in gear and don't stop until you reach your destination. For more information, log on to our website and click the link for Celebrity Bus Drivers Academy. I'm on West Park Avenue in St. Louis, Missouri, and we're gonna go talk to Dawn, who created Made for Freedom, a clothing company that employs only victims of human trafficking. Let's go hear her fascinating story. Human trafficking is the trade in people, and it does not necessarily involve the movement of a person from one place to another. In 2010, human trafficking represented an estimated $31.6 billion in international trade. Being a strong advocate for human rights, Dawn made a commitment to do everything possible to help the victims of human trafficking. So she decided to create a business that would not only sustain her life, but also the lives of many of the survivors of this horrific crime. Tell me about yourself, your, your history, a little bit about your past. I'm Dawn Mansky, formerly Dawn Williams, um, from St. Louis and love international travel. I spent 10 years living in China. Did you go to a college? I did go to college. Okay, and uh, what did you study? In, in I studied school? elementary education. After I graduated, mm -hmm. I took off to China. I taught English for several years and then I was a program director at the International Church in Beijing. So do you speak fluent, is it Mandarin? <laughs> the things that I did learn about in China that were really different and that kind of, kind of helped with the foundation of Made for Freedom was I started really understanding devaluation of the girl child. When you go and into a country where people don't value girls nearly as much, um, I would visit orphanages and they would be full of little girls that had mm. just been abandoned. I heard the stories and I met children that had been taken from a very poor village and brought into the big city by someone they called an uncle. Mm. And that man would use them as slave labor. Talking about sex trafficking, where did that come into play in your, your push and motivation uh, to that issue? Actually, when I, was, when I was in grad school, we were introduced to an organization called IJM that goes in and rescues women. And they had, there was a presentation and it was an undercover reporter that went to Cambodia. And he went in asking for young girls. They brought in several girls. They said they were 10 years old, but they looked like they were closer to six or seven. Mm. And for $10, they were offering yum yum 
which is oral sex. And when I saw when I saw seven-year-old girls um, being used as sex toys for men, I just thought, okay, what can I do? What? This is so evil. This is so wrong. I live in St. Louis. How how can I make an impact in Cambodia? I don't know what to do. And it was and it and it was something that weighed heavily on me for years. And I was invited on a research trip to India. Hmm. And I came face to face with with girls that had been taken from their families, sold into sex slavery, and then had been rescued. Walk me through the whole process of of how you decided to get involved. It, it's, it started with a pair of pants. So I, I you know, it, and that, that's the only answer I've got, you know. Yeah. I found these pants in Thailand, super comfortable. I fell in love with them, had never seen them in the United States. And I thought, I'm gonna get some of these pants. And they're fisherman pants. I was wearing them and started getting compliments from women all over the place. People in coffee shops, hospitals, everywhere, women would come up and say, those look so comfortable. And I thought, I could start a business selling these pants. So how did you put the pieces together with the pants? A friend of mine came up with the name Made for Freedom, and I thought, that's perfect. But what we did was I started talking to designers, I started talking to people in the fashion industry, and fisherman pants are very loose fitting, very mm -hmm. comfortable, but they're very baggy in the back. And so what we did was we changed the pattern because having all the bagginess in the back is not very flattering and it's not good. So we changed the pattern and therefore we changed the name. Yeah. So our pants are actually called Korea Bellies and that is taken from creating a beautiful life. Now, what do you think about Dawn and, and Made for Freedom and that whole line? And, and talk about how you guys first met and kind of the whole relationship. Well, I heard about Dawn's project through Arch Grants when she won that and read the story and then I met with Dawn and I, I don't think I've ever teared up with a vendor that I've met with, but when she was telling the story, yeah. we're all here to make a living, but when you can help other people, especially that are in such horrific situations, I, I mean, whatever we could do, of course we'd have her on board. And then the product's great on top of it. What did you know about the pants before you came in? Did you know any of the social aspect or the history of how they were made and why? Well, I had heard about Made for Freedom and the, their cause behind it, and I just really wanted to be a part of that um, as far as helping young women uh, that are caught in sex trafficking. And uh, so I just wanted to support that. Remember, when writing your business plan, it's better to underestimate your profits and be pleasantly surprised than to overestimate your abilities and be disappointed. I'm leaving you, baby. We have a sex trafficking issue in our country. We have a sex trafficking issue around the world. It's very important to us as an Arch Grants entity to be aware of where there are opportunities for us to blend the social benefit with the for-profit and Made for Freedom is working very hard to connect those two in a way that is sustainable, that allows her to create jobs, and that puts St. Louis on the map as, as having a solution. As you take women out of this terrible situation, this could potentially be one model that we hope would be one of many. So it's not just about money. There's a level of social responsibility that exists in your organization when it comes to deciding whether or not to fund. Absolutely, and the management team at Made for Freedom is very strong. Um, they were an impressive group. There are other people in this community who have worked with them who vouched for their character. Mm -hmm. um, this was not an investment made without a great deal of discussion because it is sort of a new space for us. But Dawn has been an outstanding ambassador for Arch Grants and for Made for Freedom. Yeah. And we're very hopeful that her business model proves to be um, profitable and that the women who come through it prove to have those life-changing experiences that Dawn is so committed to creating. This is a pair of the Creative Bellies. And if I were to purchase these for my wife, which I did, yes. uh, how, would, how would she go about tying them? Or how would we even learn? So well, unless, do you go with each pair bought to the home? I do. Each I go pair. and I, I illustrate. <laughs> I'll show you first, and then I'll show you how it works. OK. So fisherman pants, this is how you tie and untie. Ours are Creative Bellies, but this is the same kind of tie as fisherman pants. Okay. So you have a belt, that 
you always start with it in the back. Okay. That's the problem that people have. They try starting with a string in the front. And so one size fits many. Okay. You can gain five pounds, lose five pounds, it's all good. And then you fold them over. Okay. And you tie them. And then it comes around. And then what I do is I do a single knot or a single bow loop mm -hmm. like that. And then I tuck them up here. So they don't dangle. I don't want a little string dangling. And then you fold them down. When starting a clothing company, you should have a clear idea of what demographic you're catering to. It's difficult to start a brand that has too many focuses. What did you originally think of the concept upon meeting Dawn and, and learning about this and the purpose and the cause? What was your kind of original take on it? The thing I really liked about it was just being able to watch my wife grow and kind of blossom into it. And so um, anything that would do that for her was going to be important to me. But just her heart and passion for reaching out for those that just don't have an advocate to speak for them really spoke a lot to me as well. The people who were consulting me said, you need a lot of money to do this. In fact, it was about a million dollars. And I thought, I can't do that. The original plan was to find a good factory in India, yep. get the pants made, sell the pants, and give 20% of our net profit back to life skills and job training. We didn't have enough money to even get a small order in India because we didn't have, we had 12,000. So yeah. that kind of forced me into either I hang on to this money until I get more or I find another way to get them produced or manufactured and I was connected with a center. So it's a restore, restoration center in Thailand. Women that are rescued from sex trafficking are brought into there. They're provided with counseling, education, a safe place and life skills. And at this particular center, they learn how to sew. And I thought, oh my goodness, <laughs> you lear go. they're learning how to sew. And so they did some sample pairs for me. And mm -hmm. so it's actually not the girls at the center, but they're graduates. Mm -hmm. But once they graduate, they need a job. They need a way to support themselves and they need dignified employment. Sure. So that's where we come in and we, they work on projects. And so they're working on our pants. Our t-shirts are actually made in Calcutta at a center very similar that are working with survivors. We're putting together patterns for bags and different products that, that the women can sew as they are looking for jobs, which allows them to support themselves. Uh, what are you roughly at per unit versus, I mean, are you profitable on it? We're at a price point where we should be able to be profitable soon. I could go to a sweatshop and get these for a fraction of the price that I'm paying, yeah. but we're about dignified employment. We're about providing a better life for people, not driving them into poverty. And unfortunately, in the world that we live in today, to produce in a dignified way every step of the way usually shrinks the margin. It does. Unfortunately. And we're giving 20% back. So <laughs> You have an uphill climb, but you probably <laughs> sleep really well at night. I do, <laughs> I do. There are a million ways to start a business, but how did Dawn do it? Let's find out. She started with around $50 in the bank, a near-perfect 800 credit score. She funded the business with her personal savings, an arts grant loan, and Indiegogo. In her first year, Made for Freedom took a $500 loss, although she hopes to be profitable in 2014. Dawn said that what it really takes to make it in business is passion. Dawn's passion for changing the world allowed her to dream up a socially responsible clothing company. And it looks to me like she's sewn together a pretty buttoned up business. Now, it's not unrealistic to think that you could do the same thing. After all, Dawn wakes up in the morning and still just puts her pants on one leg at a time. For more information, log on to our website and click the link from Made for Freedom. You can't really be afraid of failure, it'll paralyze you. And um, we embrace a big risk. There's a culture in this company that likes to do things that are new, that are different, um, that are unprecedented. And what we're ultimately doing is asking ourselves if this is something that we would love, sharing that with the world and uh, listening and seeing how other people use it. We learn from that and uh, it drives us to do more and to take bigger risks. But ultimately the failures, um, they disappear and they're forgotten, but the successes are what becomes addictive. Next time on Startup, we head to Nashville, Tennessee to meet with Susan and Rowan, 
to devoted and passionate human services professionals who started Miller Rich, a company that places people with intellectual disabilities into loving homes. Then we head to Asheville, North Carolina to meet with Lauren and Matt, a highly educated and business savvy married couple who created Zapow, an art gallery with a twist that's drawing national attention. Be sure to join us next time on Startup. Yeah, that's another option for you. Okay. Let's see, this might be a little bit more your color. This one fits perfect. Oh, it feels good too. Like it was made for you? I feel very free. What? So I know we're on opposite sides of the fence, but why do you always gotta balk about what you do, huh? American Express is proud to support Startup and the millions of small businesses that put in the hard work to be open for business in neighborhoods across the country. The Chevrolet Volt, an everyday electric car with gas for longer trips. The nature of things to come. Oh, Chevrolet, find new roads. The American small business was built on one thing, relationships. And every time a customer walks through the door, a new one begins. Pay Anywhere was built to help entrepreneurs do what they do best. So keep loving what you do. Just get paid for it. Pay Anywhere. It all starts with an idea, and everyone has them. In the world of business, where you choose to take your idea determines where your idea will take you. Baker College is proud to support startups and those who dare to share their ideas with the world.